OK, so let's say we've signed up on the dotted line to spend our three-year <laughs> mission to Mars. Now, I'd kind of like to breathe for the duration of those three years. Um, now, we're presumably going to have to carry enough oxygen with us yep. for the mission out, which is a lot of oxygen. That's right, because and, and we, we, we can't get it from nowhere, right? You can't pump it in from empty space. You have to bring all that oxygen with you, but... OK, but let's say we do that, but then we don't really want to have all the oxygen on Mars and all the oxygen for the trip back because that's going to be a very big rocket that's mostly an oxygen tank. That's right. With all the fuel to lift the oxygen and etc. etc. So it'd be great if we could actually somehow fuel up an oxygen while we're on Mars. Now, on Earth, this would be a pretty simple problem. Open your mouth. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, we, we often forget that most of the atmosphere is nitrogen. Right? Oxygen. We actually don't need 100% oxygen. Again, this is this idea that we think we need 100% of O2 of oxygen to breathe. We don't. Actually, if you had 100% oxygen, you would die. Uh, the human body can survive 20 to 30% oxygen. Again, when we look you at... You can't drop the overall pressure and yep. just have that 30 to 20% get rid of the nitrogen and breathe that. Yep. And that's what a lot of the early space missions actually did. Exactly. So there are ways, and we'll talk about how the body absorbs this when we talk about medicine a bit more, to solve this problem but you still need to have some oxygen. Okay, now, on the moon, oxygen's a problem. You're probably gonna to have to get it from the uh, water. Yep. But on Mars, there's, well, the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. That's and right. as the dioxide bit says, there's oxygen in there. Exactly. There's also lots of water. Yep. We know there's ice all over the place. So there's plenty of um, molecules which have oxygen, and it's not in breathable form. Exactly. But surely we can just take, say, the carbon dioxide or the water or something and break it up to provide us with oxygen. Well, this is the idea. That's right. There is at least some raw ingredients that you can use. You don't get the cake right away. You still at least have the flour and the sugar and the eggs to make it. So the idea is, can we create one of those things into oxygen? Now, the obvious idea is carbon dioxide. Because There's it's a, all around in the air. Right. You don't have to dig it up from the ground or anything. Exactly. You just breathe it in. If you're a plant, you'd be happy. So NASA actually kind of took that idea one step further. Let's make a robotic or instrument plant. So MOXIE, uh, which is a, essentially an acronym for we're going to create oxygen in situ in the environment of Mars, hence their terms, was, is this little instrument, and it's about the size of a toaster. It's not very big, on the rover Perseverance. Now, what MOXIE had was this technique called electrolysis. Now, this is essentially the same technique that we looked at on the moon to create that ice into hydrogen and oxygen. But carbon dioxide is a little bit more tricky to do this. The carbon and dioxide and the two oxygens love to be together. They're in perfect harmony. There's lots of energy together. It takes a lot of work to break them apart. So you have to zap them pretty hard to wrench those exactly. pesky uh, carbons away from the oxygen. That's right. And that takes energy. And where does that energy come from? Well, we'll have to deal with that later as well. But let's imagine we have infinite amount of energy. Well, in MOXIE, we have our anode and our cathodes. We have positive and negative. So we get some carbon dioxide that goes through it, enters here, and we can take some water to help process. And luckily, Mars has a lot of both of these. Now, what MOXIE has in other things is something called an yttrium stabilized zirconium. Now, what that means is you have zirconium with two oxygens plus yttrium with three oxygens. This kind of acts like a membrane or a cell to give you extra elements to help create this natural process. It's kind of like a catalyst to speed up the reaction. Exactly. We can't wait forever. We need some extra help in this. And through some great chemistry, you can use some water and some electrons that we can get from nickel, which actually we get from the zirconium. Uh, and we can then get some hydrogen. We have our carbon dioxide coming in. And then we start producing oxygen out. Now, what we actually produce is for every two carbon dioxide molecules, we get two carbon monoxide plus oxygen. OK, presumably the carbon monoxide being poisonous, you have to get rid of somehow. But then you've got a little bit of oxygen coming out. We have a little bit. You only prized one of the two oxygens off the carbon. It was too hard to get the second one off. It was, I want my oxygen. Exactly. So even though there's a lot of this stuff, it's still really hard to do, still requires energy, and we still produce some carbon monoxide, and we actually still have leftover carbon monoxide. Now, we just vent it in the Mars. We don't really care. But how much oxygen do we create? So, so, okay, so this is time. In seconds. 
Okay, so, so they start warming up and then they turn on the current and they get, whoa, 5.37 grams of oxygen. That's, That's going right. to last me a long time. Not. Well, and it took only about an hour. Is five grams useful? Well, it turns out five grams of oxygen gives you about 10 minutes of air. Okay, so we'd need five of these. So we can look at this. How much do we actually need? So we need about 30 grams of O2 per hour per person. So that's how much you need to breathe. Okay. So that means we need about 720 grams of oxygen per day per person. So in a year, now keeping in mind, when we look at our orbits, you're gonna be there a year. We're gonna be there at least a year. And we're not even talking about coming back. We're just talking about coming there. You need over t almost a quarter of a ton of oxygen per person. So for a six person mission, you're gonna be over well over a ton, say one and a half tons That's or right. so. Because you're not oxygen. going by yourself. All, all of these missions, as we'll talk about with safety, have to have more than one person for lots of obvious reasons. Okay, but presumably you could make Moxie bigger or have lots of Moxies. Yeah, we can turn this into it. So firstly, because Moxie is not gonna be efficient. It's obviously small. Now the limitation is how big they could fit on this rover. Well, we can solve it if we're sending our gigantic rockets. We can put any weight we on it and the amount of energy you need to put on it. So they that's were only- That's the problem. So that's right. You could uh, scale up to um, how much we'd need 18 years of moxie, which uh, means we'd need 18 moxies working for one year to supply it, oh. or one 18 times as big. Exactly. And that's going to be a lot of power, isn't it? That's right. So if we wanted to realize that in order to go in an hour, this heating up to create five grams of oxygen, it needed about a few watts. Now. The Mars rovers have to op operate on a budget. It has lots of other signs it needs to power rate. This can't steal everything. So let's make Mega Moxie. Okay. I'm not going to go 18 times bigger. I'm going to go 200 times bigger. And we're going to create 30 kilowatts of energy. Now, presumably, we can do this through solar panels, and we'll talk about this, but Mars rovers are powered by solar energy. But the sun's energy is a lot weaker out at Mars. You need a lot of solar panels. Exactly. So I this mean, my roof at home has you know, two kilowatts. So you're going to need something 10 times bigger than that, even if it was on Earth. And the that, sunlight at Mars is like much weaker. Exactly. So this is going to be ambitious. I mean, this is the, hey, we have a large fraction of where we're living covered in solar panels. So if we could do that, though, if we could do have our solar farm on Mars just to power our oxygen, keeping in mind, this isn't going to go to anything else we can produce two kilograms of oxygen per hour. Yep. Now that's a lot more. And you need this fairly ambitious thing because you want some for the way back. And also the sun's only going to work during the daytime. So you're going to produce enough extra during the day that it's going to last at night. Exactly. And you're probably going to want some for other things like plants and the like. Yeah, that's right. If you're cutting just barely enough to escape, you don't have any reserves. You don't have any backup plans. And oxygen might be useful for rocket fuel to come back. For that's example. right. So we can now make what we would need in an hour per person in a minute in a day per person, in a half an hour. And in fact, to fuel that six person mission, we only need a month. So that's actually a lot better than that 18 years or there are 18 versions of this MOXIE. So now all of a sudden, okay, we need a lot of energy, but the process works. It's been done on Mars. We know it can do it. We have a lot of this ingredients. We do need to come up with a lot of power, but it gives us a lot of reserves and a lot of oxygen for other things. So it is possible to create enough air from the environment of Mars to keep so us alive. So you push the problem back. The problem is not, can we get oxygen? The problem is, can we get enough power to generate the oxygen? And that's what we have to look at.